looks dangerously like sunshine to me. Time for another one day winter wandering. Something is wrong with these traffic lights. I've been waiting here since Wednesday. It's now Tuesday. That's right, ladies and gents, look at this glorious weather. What a day for a bike ride. But although it may look like I'm heading out of the city to take you on some wide reaching adventure, I'm actually just heading outside of Hamburg to turn around, come back in, because today's one day winter wandering is gonna be in the Hamburg area. Starting off with the main way to get underneath the River Elbe, which is the huge river that goes past Hamburg. This is the Elbe Tunnel. In a second, we'll pop out the other side of the river continue our little tour, a little one day winter wandering of sunny, sunny Hamburg. Ooh, I was proper nippy in there. I am actually glad that I went against my uh, worst judgment. I was planning to come out in full on summery leather jacket, jeans, summer gloves, but very happy that I went for the Oxford Mondial jacket. And the Knox Covert Mark III, three season gloves, although I am still rocking the Knox Shield Spectra single layer jeans. So yeah, completely warm I am not, but it's definitely better than had I come out leather clad. Anyway, continuing on, two big items on this tour. One of them to the right here is the Hamburg Harbor. As far as I'm aware, it's the third largest harbor in Europe. And that looks like the second largest ship in the harbor. But that is not the first thing that we're gonna take a proper close look at. To be honest, I think this is about as close as we're gonna be able to get, but we're gonna see it from several different angles. But before that, we're gonna bowl across that bad boy, the Kohlbrandbrücke. Problem is, I've got no idea how to get onto it. But around here is a warren of clover leaves, switchbacks, flyovers. And obviously, because I'm on my own front doorstep, I've come out completely without the sat nav today. So everything is gonna be by chance and from my noggin. So Lordy only knows what could happen today. But I am sensing that this is not the way. So time for a harbor U-turn. Probably not really supposed to be in here. Off to the left. Now the bridge appears to have disappeared completely. What the hell is it? Okay, that's not funny. I've lost a massive bridge. <laughs> well, this isn't it either, but nothing wrong with any excuse to have a bit of slag in the video, eh? And then we are coming a little bit too much once again into the harbour. So, actually are seeing it much closer than I expected on this little trip. But this isn't the way either, so time for another Yui. I sense there's going to be several Yui's in this video. Prepare yourself for it, ladies and gents. God, imagine having so many slags, you have to put them on a heap. It's incredible that in all of this industry, there's still a church spire poking out in the middle of it all over there. Right, so there's the bridge in front of us now. The motorway goes that way, so hopefully if we go under the motorway, we can't possibly miss. I think this looks good. Right, well, that's us under the bridge, so that's a start. <laughs> How do we get on it? I think I we'll have to follow this noisy chap. He's in a hurry wherever he's going. This could not be more complicated, could it? Oh, we are climbing. This looks like we're in. We're on the bridge. It's very handy. They've got a car's lane and a truck's lane. So now that we're on the bridge, I'll tell you something about it in James May style. This is a bridge in Hamburg called the Kohlbrandbrücke. Afraid that is all I know. <laughs> oh, Grand Tour, you've got my phone number. But this bridge is something that you don't often really get to come over unless you've got a particular reason, hence me not having a clue how to get onto it. But it is something that almost everybody sees on the skyline as you drive into Hamburg from the south and out of Hamburg from the north. 
and you can see pretty much all of the city from it as you curve over. So we can see a lot of what we're going to see on the rest of this little trip. There, finally, that's the first stop out of the way. Have a good measure, a humongous pile of scrap. I just realised actually it's not called the Kohlbrandbrücke, it's the Kohlbrandbrücke. Idiot! Course lads, 12.30 with a beer, nice work. So then the next little surprise, nestled in amongst all of this extreme industry. Are two of the biggest theatres in Hamburg. Well, the two actual biggest theatres. So this one is The Lion King, König der Löwen, along with this very Gaudi-esque dolphin and fat woman. And then the one at the back there is the Theater an der Elbe affectionately known by many of the locals as The Helmet. I've actually worked in that theatre a couple of times, hence being able to actually find that a bit quicker than I found the bridge. But then from this side of the river, because we're on the south of the Elbe right now, you can see a bunch of the stuff that we're going to see a bit closer. Over there's Landungsbrücken, that's the Michel Church, the background there's the Fernsehturm, the old boat there is the Rickmer Rickmers, which is a floating museum, as well as the Cap San Diego there. And this wondrous glass construction is the Elbe Philharmonie. So yeah, let's carry on, get a closer look at all of those. No, I'm afraid it's not the swimming cosy that makes your ass look big, love. It's your ass. <coughs> oh, onwards. Yeah, the next challenge is going to be navigating our way across these random waterways and bridges to get to the other side of the river. Oh, these trucks are having a standoff. They're getting ready to joust. On guard! I'll tell you one thing, it stinks absolutely rotten around here. It smells like hot tar mixed with elephant turd. Well, that went a lot more smoothly than I expected. We are already about to cross the River Elba. One of the verschiedene Elbbrücken. And that puts us onto the city side of the river, next to these brand new tube stations, the Elbbrücken tube stations that only very recently got finished. Very stylish. And that wavy beast over there to the right, that's the Großmarkt. Or the Großmarkt Halle. And in one of those hoops is actually where the Harry Potter theatre show takes place, or should be taking place once this pandemic's over. And for those of you who don't know particularly, I actually do work as a theatre lighting technician, so this is why I've been involved with a couple of these theatres. So yeah, that's where my current job is. Although, I say current, because I've been furloughed for almost a year now. So now as we come over this bridge here, we can get a bit of a look at the, the Speicherstadt, which is the old storage area of the city. This is where all the, all the stuff used to get bought in on the ships and then spread out into these red brick storage houses. A lot of which was actually bombed to absolute pieces and then rebuilt based on the original blueprints and sketches and photos. Yeah, we'll have a quick blast through there in a second. Just want to go and get a closer look at the Elbe Philharmonie for you. But as you can see, as well as all of the red brick buildings, there's also plenty of harbour side swanky flat opportunities here for the rich and famous. I actually quite like to live down this area, but it's proper expensive. Imagine a view across the harbour from your balcony, that would be quite special. And that right in front of us, the swirly glass monstrosity, is the Elbe Philharmonie. As far as I am aware, the bottom part has been there for a very, very long time. It was some kind of storage as well. And then they built the top bit on top of it as a kind of new meets old kind of architectural thing. So there you go. There is the Hamburger Elbe Philharmonie, which, as I recall, ran several years over time schedule and several billions of euros over budget caused a lot of angry discussions around the city. But it's finished now. If we walk up to the edge here, you can see over there on the other side of the river, there's the Lion King 
and the helmet. Yeah, that's that. Onwards. But not a single person telling me it's forbidden to stop there. If we cut through here, see just how far I can actually get. You can see some of the Speicherstadt buildings up close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people have the best imagination. I think mostly now these buildings are all carpets, coffee and herbs. There's the Hamburg dungeon. Oh, actually, what I wanted to show you there was the miniature Wonderland, but I've kind of fudged that because I completely missed it. Oh well, we'll see it from the other side. Can only go that way, that's rubbish. Right, through complete chance, let's try again. You can see all the waterways in between all of these buildings. You can actually take boat trips that come bombing down all of these little waterways. On the back of all the buildings you can see the winches and the access hatches and things, where they used to load stuff into and out of the ships. Really quite cool, isn't it? Love it. So as we head over the water, once again. Oh yeah, there you can see, over my left shoulder, is the Model Eisenbahn Wunderland, more commonly known as Miniatur Wunderland, which has some of the most impressive model railways and model building, I don't know what you'd call them, They're, it's just insane. You can even go inside on Google Maps and look around. Really impressive. So that's another one of the churches, whose name I'm afraid I can't remember. Ah, yes, it's the Katharinenkirche. Catherine Church, Charlotte's much, much older sister. And then also here to the right, in one of the Speicherstadt buildings, the Deutsches Zoll Museum, which is the customs museum. It's quite interesting to see some of the stuff that people have tried to smuggle through. So as we turn left onto this street, first of all, that quite nondescript building there is the entrance to the Gröninger Brauhaus, which is the oldest brewery in Hamburg. Potentially the oldest brewery in Germany, I think. Really, really old. And when you go in there, there's this massive cellar-like basement full of casks and little corners and cubby holes. It's really cool and you can have beer brewed actually in the building there. Very worth a visit. And this here, this old Gothic masterpiece, is the Nikolai Kirche, which was actually in danger for a very long time as they couldn't decide whether they wanted to repair it or knock it down because it was so dangerous because it was in a horrible, horrible state. But the powers that be decided better to repair it than to knock it down, and there it stands. For years and years, it had scaffolding all over it, but it looks like it's standing under its own strength now. So what can we do next? Ah, I know, something you're gonna like. I mean, to be honest, a lot of the things that we're seeing on this video, a lot of the places we're going to, will have already featured on a video I made years ago now, when I followed the route of the Hamburg Marathon, which basically takes in most of these sites. But I thought it was about time to give a refresh of that in a bit more of a relaxed environment. And then here to the left is the Michel, which is a really quite impressive piece of churchy cathedralness. That is quite a monster. You can actually climb to the top of the tower for a small fee and then see across all of the harbour and even some of the Hamburg skyline looking to the north as well. You know, here to the left, this jaunty looking building there, that is the Tansenden Turma, I think. It means dancing towers, because there's two towers that are leaning away from each other, so it looks like they're dancing. But before we get to those, that's Otto von Bismarck over there in the park, a great big Denkmal or monument, but both of those mark the entrance onto the world-famous Reaper Barn. This is the sex street, sex district of Hamburg. This is where all the strip clubs are, all the titty bars, a lot of questionable nightlife, sex shops. There's one. And then of course, my absolute favorite is the sex club McDonald's. It's an ordinary McDonald's, but it's underneath a sex club. What is not to love? And then smack in the middle of it, 
is the Reeperbahn police station, which unfortunately, because it's light, you can't see it, but even the Polizei sign has blue neon around the edges of it. So it fits in with the decor of the area and the style absolutely perfectly. Right, well, that's the end of the Reeperbahn, but if we swing a Yui, something I'm quite interested to see. Oh, there's even a Hooters. Of course there is. Why wouldn't there be? There's the Hans Albersplatz. That's where all the Irish bars are. If we take it right into here, past the Neon police station, you come to a very strange street called Herbertstrasse, which you're only allowed to come into if you're a man. Women prohibited. And normally, these windows, as you can see, there's a chair there, full of hookers, strippers, touting their wares in this closed off street. And if women come down here, they get spat at, things thrown at them, absolute madness. I'll be honest, I've never been down here before. Kind of a bit eerie, isn't it? All of these windows with chairs in them. You imagine normally they're just full of naked people. What you can do with your free time nowadays, eh? And of course, there's a cash point in the middle. <sighs> Why ever not? And a nice bit of tasteful graffiti on the way out. So there you go. There's Herbertstrasse, Hamburg's sex street in times of Corona. Ooh. Onwards. I'm right past the police station, hoping they don't have too much interest in my shiny silver visor because I've discovered after I'd bought it, apparently silver visors aren't allowed on the street. Didn't fully realize that before, but yeah. Oh, which reminds me that, yeah, there's a new helmet. I forgot to mention the new helmet. But yeah, I was so impressed with the HJC Arthur 90S, the quality of it, the fit of it, the quietness of it, that I actually traded that in and bought myself this HJC Arthur 70. So far, not regretting that choice at all. I think it looks pretty cool. I think the silver visor is a nice touch. I'll be honest, I've always wanted a silver visor. So it is pushing on my cheeks a little bit, but I'm just telling myself at the moment that's because of the brand spanking new foam pads, hoping that they're going to soften a little bit. But you know, when you've got such a hero's jaw as I have, these things are going to happen. Occupational hazard. Right then, I could actually do with heading in there. So let's have a brief pause. I'll meet you in a second. We'll carry on when I'm juiced up. That was very interesting and something I didn't actually think about before. I haven't been out for a while on the bike, but the rules in Germany currently regarding face masks, which obviously are common across the world right now, but in Germany, it's been tightened or elevated, if you like. So you're only allowed to go anywhere wearing a medical face mask or an FFP2 mask. I uh, just went in there with my helmet on because up till the last time I rode the bike, there hasn't been a problem. Uh, and the guy there said to me, I have to go back outside, take my helmet off and put my mask on which to be honest I, I kind of understand the rules are the rules we are in Germany the rules must be followed it's just a bit of a faff isn't it but I've got nowhere else to be but yeah anyway I was uh, ready to do that and then he went or you can just close your visor so <laughs> do my entire transaction in the petrol station with my mirrored visor closed shouting at the guy so that he could hear me very odd Anyway, onwards with the tour, onto the next point. So we are now heading northwest, parallel to the river, avoiding DHL vans wherever possible. Ooh. Oh, that was a dark time in my history. I had to drive one of those things for a month, possibly the worst job I've ever done. So respect to all you guys doing that shit. We're gonna take a little dip down here, back towards the river a bit. Take a look at the back end of the Große Elbstrasse. See the bridge over there that we crossed at the beginning. But this is where I think historically and to a very large degree, still today, a lot of the fish come into Hamburg. This is the back end of the fish market. Oh, I can smell it already. That's, that's very fishy. Smug me a kipper, I'll be back for breakfast. Oh, this doesn't help that in that petrol station because of the corona rules, the toilet was closed. So I'm sloshing like a waterbed on a power plate. Yeah, but this is where people can come and get their fish rolls, their fish brötchen. Frischer gibt's nicht. And then obviously like everywhere in Hamburg, next to the old 
knackered, worn out historical stuff. Here's fancy, shiny, spangly new stuff. So there's loads of high-end office buildings, fancy flats, a shark bar, oh, more wee sloshing cobbles, and some super fancy furniture shops. the old Philomene over there in the distance, as well as a couple of massive dry docks over there on the right. And we want to go left here because for a short stint, we're going to head out of the city, see something a bit more natural. Played a gig in there. My side job as wedding singer. <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's true. Because if we come away from the city a bit, heading northwest, further up the river, everything changes a little bit, becomes a bit more open. The houses become a bit more, I don't know what they are, but they're a bit more of it. I mean, that one's, that one's a hell of a lot of it, whatever it is. But on the way towards the very well-to-do area of Blancaneza, and furthermore onto the very, very well-to-do area of Vida, we reach Overgunner which is this little area here. And somewhere, I think, hopefully along here, crazy little old house. That's awesome, with a view across the river as well. I hate to think what these houses are worth. We can actually duck in and semi, sort of legally, we can roll down here to find masses of people. I don't know about this because I played a gig in there too. My time as a birthday party singer. <sighs> and down here is the beginnings of a beach. I think about a kilometer that way. Sadly a bit too far to be walking in bike gear. There's a massive volcanic stone called the Alta Schwede, which was dragged here by prehistoric glaciers from Sweden. And it's something like 200 tons, hence being called the Alte Schwede, which is quite funny because it's something Germans say as an exclamation. Like if something's a bit shocking or surprising, they'll be like, oh, Alte Schwede. Yeah, so this is the beginnings of a beach, but I can do better than that. Because if we hit the road again, do yet another Yui, and then just head a tiny little bit further out of the city, we first find a massive park. by some even more grand houses than those we've already seen. Okay, that one's incredible. It looks like a spaceship has landed on top of an old school. Very cool. As you can see, the river is widening out quite considerably. Yeah, oh, played a gig in that church too. I think that was my favorite, in fact. Sounded <laughs> proper good. As far as I know, if we duck down here, which conveniently is closed to cars and bikes at weekends, but today is Monday. Uh, Boris's stairs, Becker's Trepper. Having a crazy little house like this on these little windy streets would be quite awesome, wouldn't it? But I imagine that getting to work in the morning would be a bit of a pain in the ass. And then just like that, we're at the river again. As you can hopefully see, it's taken on a far more beach-like appearance. It's like a little seaside town, isn't it? Oh, very cool. It's one of the few cases where yellow is almost acceptable. It's far more beachy, isn't it? But there still are rocks leading into the water, so I think we can do better. It's just a tiny little bit further on through the wilderness and a bit more wilderness. We knew Hamburg had so much wilderness. And a tiny bit of a walk. And with the right kind of weather, you'd be forgiven for thinking you've landed somewhere on the beach in California. Look at this, oh, it's really nice. Loads of little shady cubby holes to sit in. Bloody brilliant all within a stone's throw from the city, which is just a mile or two that way. Well, maybe three or four. Anyway, with that little beach finding adventure done, as there's nowhere down here to grab a coffee, 
head back, we're heading to the city and we're almost done. A couple more things to see and then I imagine there won't be a lot of sunlight left and it'll start to get cold again. Now the real question is, is it secluded enough around here for me to have a cheeky wee in a bush? I don't think so. Oh, wait a cotton picking minute. You never guess what I've bloody found. It's only a bloody toilet. Well, thanks to that little walk in the woods there, pretty toasty now. Had to undo all of the flaps on this Oxford Mondial jacket, despite the thermal liner being in. Could still feel a nice cooling breeze all the way up my arms, across my chest, and down my back now. That's very pleasant. Right, enough of the woods, back to the city. First, I've got to find my way out of luxury suburban hell. Centrum, that sounds good. Fucking hell. Just push all the buttons, why don't you? Got to get one of them right. Hey Cardo, radio. Hey Cardo, radio on. Hey Cardo, play radio. Hey Cardo, turn on radio. Hey Cardo, radio, go. Hey Cardo, play radio. Hey Cardo, stop being a f penis. Well, here we are back in the city and coming across the northern tip of the area called Altonar. This is fast turning more into a tour of the theatres that Andy's worked in because I worked in that one as well, the Neue Flora on the Cirque du Soleil show Paramore, which although it has some pretty amazing, spectacular and impressive tricks and circus acts, the story itself, essentially the good guys win purely because the bad guy gives up and changes his mind. Three stars. But then again, for the Cirque du Soleil stuff, definitely five stars. place, all these old grand buildings <laughs> covered in graffiti and all a bit knackered. But then as I miraculously and as if by magic find myself travelling in back in the opposite direction, we can swing a right underneath this railway bridge. I'm swinging by Central Park, which is a really cool little beach bar in the middle of town. Before we swing a right on Schulterblatt, literally shoulder blade, and then cut through another very popular, very famous area of Hamburg, the Schanze. This is where all the party is. This is where, on an ordinary summer's day, this entire area would just be rammed full of people, tables, drinkers, party, party, party. Oh, and these cobbles are far less painful now I found that relief cabin by the beach. So yeah, that was the Schanze. We're gonna carry on, not a huge amount left now past the old Rindermarkthalle and the huge Bunkertron in the distance there as we edge into St Pauli which for the football fans among you will definitely ring a bell because there on the left is the St Pauli football grounds. There you go, FC St Pauli. And then we've made a bit of a full circle there as we've come back to the Michel on the front left there, the dancing towers up there to the right, the Reaper Barn, Otto van Bismarck up there on the hill. Looks like he's getting some renovations in his under jubblies. So instead of retracing our steps down there, I'm going to take a left up here. Going past a very grand building, I don't know what it is. Ah, that's the Hamburg History Museum. And then that behemoth nestling in the trees off there in the distant skyline is our next port of call. I've never seen those dudes before. Swing around with the Leishalle to the right. Various courtyards and legal buildings on the left. And then as if by magic, we approach the very foundations of this, the Fernsehturm, the TV tower. Now that Mercedes when it pulled off, it sounded like a sun was being forged inside the engine. Anyway, yeah, these are the uh, the Messehallen, the exhibition halls either side, and that's the TV tower, which has been empty and derelict for many a year. Apparently before the pandemic, there were rumblings and rumors that there was actually a plan from somebody to buy it, bring it back to life and have some kind of a business. Because back in the day, there used to be a restaurant cafe up there and the whole thing would rotate. 
is now it's completely still. I think it had some massive issues with fireproofing and safety regulations, so it's going to be a tremendous investment to get that bad boy running again. But it'd be cool to have a coffee up there, wouldn't it? To wait and see if that happens after this pandemic finishes. So with that out of the way, onwards to what I think is going to be the f final stop of the day. And that is this beauty, the Alster. What I would say is probably the centerpiece of Hamburg, tourism-wise and aesthetic-wise. Just a lake in the very center of the city. A little bit like Geneva in that respect, with the Four Seasons Hotel there on the left as well. And this is also split into two. This is the inner part. Oh, oh, I'm not allowed to go down there. No bikes, no cars. We pedestrianised the middle. Bloody hell. But yeah, this is split into two pieces. This is the inner part, or the Binnenalster. And then the other side of that bridge over there is a much larger bit. And normally, we have a fountain spraying water 20 metres into the air in the middle of it. But for some reason, they've switched it off. Don't know whether that's to try and stop crowds gathering or what. Look at that, still frozen a little bit in the shadows there. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, why not while we're here? Take a look at it from the other side. And that's as far as we can go. And then that up there in the distance is Munkerbergstrasse, which is the main shopping street of Hamburg. But no easy way to get to there from here, so I'm afraid that's going to have to do. And then, because my batteries all died, and I didn't want to rob you of the reveal moment, to come round here once more, there's the Hauptbahnhof in the distance there, and see the side of the Atlantic Hotel, famously featured in James Bond, where he runs across the top of the roof doing some nonsense. But yeah, this is the uh, Außenalster or well, the outside Alster. This is, as you can see, much, much larger in the summertime or even possibly on days like today when things are normal. You can hire sailboats, rowboats, and just sail around the thing to your heart's content. She made a cheesy little music video on a rowboat once. If you've got any interest in that, I'll stick a link in the description. Some little ditty what I wrote being sang on the water on a boat. But the full circumference of the whole thing is about seven kilometers. In my fitness heyday, when I first moved here, I once jogged round it twice. That was something that I planned to do all the time, over and over again, regularly. Have a guess how many more times I did it after that. But I think you can't really call yourself a hamburger till you got yourself a coffee and had a stroll around the Elster. Because it is quite pretty. And then as we have to go away from the Elster for a little bit, I'm planning to go back and have a proper look. We come onto this strange street, which is the only one I've ever heard of, where the direction of travel of this street changes depending on what time of day it is. So in the mornings, traffic goes that way. In the afternoons, traffic goes that way. So you can see these signs. From four in the morning to midday, that sign would have said, no entry. And the street is called Zierichstrasse. Be interesting to hear if any of you have also got strange direction changing streets in your cities. So hopefully if we just tuck in here. Nip round this roundabout. Which are popping up all over Germany now incidentally. And then we find ourselves back at the moist vastness of it all. Once again edged with quite splendiferous homes. I imagine our monthly rent will probably just about cover a day in one of these places. I mean, that one's even got a tower. I want a tower. So there it is, the semi-frozen Alston Alster proper up close to the water. Just in time for the sun to go down. 
And because you can't really say you've been to Hamburg without trying one of the local delicacies. The mighty Franzbrüchen. Nothing to do with France, everything to do with tasty, tasty goodness. This is the uh, Streusel variety. Normally it's just cinnamon without the Streusel stuff, but what doesn't get better by adding crumble to it? So, cheers.